players, all first team regulars, Geddes for side, McKinley, Rafferty, Angus and Coyne. And Morton coming out for their second match, starting off with Wiley, Holmes, Hunter, Margaard, Bold and Robertson. Morton having taken something of a dropping from Aberdeen in the opening match, really have to make an impression on Dundee. Physical play over on the far side from Robertson. Good running by Rafferty. Inside is Coyne. It's for side. Oh, what a great opening goal from Dundee. A fine a sweeping move, giving Dundee the lead. Started deep inside their own half with Ian Angus in possession. It was Coyne who set it up for Forsyth, drilling it past Wiley. Well, he had no chance at all. It was a marvellous shot, wasn't it? Well placed. It was like a pass into the net rather than anything else. Jimmy Holmes playing a ball under that just needed instant control from Jim Robertson, but under pressure from Rafferty, he couldn't manage. And it's McKinley playing it wide. Rapidly becoming shell shocked. What a finish it was from Angus. On the volley, well past the keeper. Will there be a better goal than that? We'll see this in these sixes. It'd be very doubtful, wouldn't it? That was precision passing and running off the ball and finishing. Just push McKinley. Here to be pushed from the back by Bold, but referee Crombie saw nothing amiss. There's Tommy Coyne, now McKinley. Back to Coyne! Neatly finished by Coyne. Country's joint leading goal scorer with Ali McCoy's Tommy Coyne. That's his first goal of the 60s tournament. And it's McKinley who worked his way along the board to play it into Coyne and into the net. There's Jockey Scott and Drew Jarvey on the Dundee bench. Jock, isn't it very apparent they're about the full-time players and the part-time players? I mean, that was just a pass. It was just a natural striker's goal. A chance on the bottom. And Jim Robertson makes no mistake. That's a welcome goal for Morton. There seemed to be all sorts of confusion here. Both the ball was played off the board. It came across wide to Robertson with the goal gaping in front of him. And Geddes was cut off. Here's Ram Shannon. Harvey. Tackled well by Collins. A wrestling match in the corner. Bridge over there trying to arrange a substitution for Dundee. Wiley. McGeeky off the board, looking for Gurley. Determined little player, Gurley. Jakobsen. Here's Stuart Rafferty with Harvey ahead. Still Harvey. Took on the keeper brilliantly, but there's been a penalty kick awarded, I think. Yes, a defending player went into the goalkeeper's area. Now that's marked off goal area in front of David Wiley. The sacrosanct, only Wiley should be there. A Morton defender went in there to get an advantage. That's why it's a penalty. It's well saved by Wiley, but it's gone in for the rebound from Graham Harvey. The, penalty, the goal has been given. 4-1 to Dundee. And it started off with a splendid save from Wiley from the penalty kick initially off the bar. There was Harvey, and Wiley couldn't keep that out. That was good refereeing as well, Jock, because if you noticed that the big number 10 of Morton was in, inside the box and, and the referee allowed the goal to stand. So the closing minute now of the first half, Dundee leading by four goals to one and looking very comfortable and there will be a big match to come with Aberdeen and Dundee right up to the fancy. There's Shannon, who's on head of Rafferty allowing Jakobsen to win possession. So there the clock ticking away, the second and first half. 
counting down. And they're looking very comfortable on their 4-1 lead. But there is another free kick. You see the long ball played forward from the defensive third to the front third without touching anything in the middle. It's a free kick, but there wasn't any time to take it. That's half time between Dundee and Morton. Dundee leading by four goals to one. cushion of three goals and off to the second half and I think the major task Bertie they may well be to preserve energy well this is it you know they've got the game won but it, in saying that it, it's so difficult to do that out there Jock when, when you're a professional player and you see a you see an area that's that's uh, open for you to get into it it's just natural for you to, to run into the space but you, you can't really turn around and say stop doing this good have that from Rafferty just wide of the target we may get a fair number of substitutions, I think, though, from Dundee to try and ring the changes and keep the players as fresh as possible. McKinley. Angus doing well, powerfully getting to that. Head of McGeeky. It's back with Robertson. Robertson again. Into the far corner for Hunter. Gigi always kept that out rather than anything else inside the Hindi box. Rafferty, a good ball out of defence. Here's Angus, he has Tommy Coin waiting on the left. Angus going all the way himself. And the bottom defence did well. So there's Robertson. Takes a short free kick. Alan Lawrence on the field now for Dundee. Changes coming thick and fast from both sides. Here's McKinley. The interception was by Holmes. Here's McGeeky. He's played once in a similar match. He's been substituted on one other occasion, but clearly one for the future of Capolo. Robbed that time by Shannon. Very strong on the ball. Here's Coyne waiting inside. Well, that's the kind of spec Tommy Coyne to accept. Goalkeeping again though from Wiley. Here's Lawrence. Now right. Shannon. And touched in by Lawrence. Another for Dundee making it 5-1. But Dundee looking so menacing whenever they come forward. Switching play from one flank to the other. And there was Lawrence sliding in. to Forsyth. Lawrence. Coin. Good running by Lawrence. That was well read by Jim Hunter for Morton. Jim Bork back in the field. This is Hunter. Very tough along these boards. Hunter switching into the far side towards Bog. It was for side for the challenge. No Holmes. Here's McKinley. Tommy Coy needs support. He's on his own for the moment. Looks for McKinley inside, but it was Christensen who came back. Marga. It was Bog. There is Keith Wright, playing the one-two with Christensen. Side to right. Well, and Betty, you've now seen Aberdeen winning well, and you've seen Dundee create this good lead. Which of these two sides do you fancy? Well, I'm going to say, I think it's going to be a very good game. It's evenly matched. They've got so many personalities, and they're well organised. I, I, it could go to anyone's game. Charlie Nicholas could change it just with that wee bit of flair that he had. But in saying that, looking at the they've got so many goal scorers for different positions. I mean, you've got Angus there and you've got Coyle. They, they, they seem, it seems to be ever ending this. It's a great, it's a great, it's a mad for the sexies tonight, today. 
So the throw out will come from Bobby Geddes after that shot over the top and and he's continually changing their men, making the best possible use of their resources. They started out only with 10 players in the squad, though. Moff, on the other hand, have 12, the maximum number. It's a good pass towards Shannon, laid off the coin. And this bow. Now Shannon. So free kick it is to Dundee, quickly taken, to Forsyth, inside the final five minutes of the match. Dundee leading by five goals to one, and looking good value for the lead at the moment. Here's Jacobson. Here's Rafferty. Jacobson going inside as for side to find Stuart Rafferty. Coin, uh, Angus rather forcing along the boards. Here's Harvey. And Rafferty had to wait to let him out of the shitty area. He did well though and thumped it in for Dundee six. That was quick thinking here, Joe. He showed a marvelous bit of composure. So here was Harvey, now he does well initially to get the shot on target, it was well blocked by Wiley and you can see Rafferty having to wait for that to come out with Thumbit Hall. Now Rafferty, a wide pass towards Harvey and we've seen some examples of Graham Harvey's excellent close control. Here's McKinley. This will suit Dundee fine to retain possession and see out closing three minutes or so. Rafferty. Blocked by Margard. Angus to Rafferty. Angus again. And yet another goal from Ian Angus. He scored a brilliant goal in the first half. And now one in the second. This is great play once again. Best of 60's action as this was set up for the 1 2 and the finish from Angus. That was tremendous, job, wasn't it? That was something that I hope all the schoolboys that's played football love football at watch because that was all about possession football, close control, and marvellous finishing. McKinley, the far side to Shannon, yes, Harvey. Brave save from David Wiley at the feet of Rab Shannon. Well, if anyone has any doubts at all that all the players are totally committed, they can just cite that as an example. And there's a good goal for Jakobsen from Morton. And a rousing burst of applause around the exhibition centre, greeting Morton's second goal from Thomas Jakobsen. On the break, the pass came forward from Christensen, a Danish specialist, and it steered wide of Bobby Geddes. That was a Danish pastry job, well finished, wasn't it? That was see what you call marvellous. Two good passes and a marvellous finish. No question, a penalty kick being required to settle this particular joust. And he winning by seven goals to two. And looking very good value indeed. They seem to have the 60s style of play very well taped. Trying to play by Young Gurley to find Margaret, who's running to Keith Wright. This is McKinley. Both there is Harvey, he has coin with him. Oh, that's a fine finish from Graham Harvey. Thundering the ball into the top corner. What a fine individual goal it was. There was Harvey turning, spotting the angle, and Wiley perhaps out of position slightly when the shot came in. That's right, but give every, everybody their due. Morton's through caution to the wind, and they've just turned around and said, let's get through. And Lars Christensen goes straight to the end to shoot home a goal for Morton. It's now a remarkable total of eight goals to three. Is this not a great advert for the game, Jock? And here we go again, we're up front again. Harvey oh, well. sends it back, and in it goes from Lawrence. 
incredible. Scarcely enough time to show you the goals. So it's Alan Lawrence who takes that one. The first one we see there, though, that's Alan Lawrence's goal. No time to show you Christensen's goal. So the clock ticking away, seconds going as Christensen thumps the ball over the top. And there is the Hutar. It's a very famous scoreline in the end. 1961 will forget that quickly but it's nine for Dundee three for Morton and what a fine match we have in prospect between Aberdeen and Dundee oh.